Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'll be comparing the On Cloud X3 to the On Cloud 5. Four major differences to note about these shoes is number one, what they're intended to be used for. So I get a lot of questions about the Cloud 5 and if you can use it for working out. I get a lot of questions about the Cloud X3, if you can use it for daily wear, and I don't think on does the best job at disclosing the purposes behind both of these shoes. So the first major difference is the intention of both of these shoes. The Cloud X3 is going to be your go-to shoe if you want a shoe for short to mid-range runs and cross training. So this shoe is designed for training specifically, whereas the On Cloud 5 is gonna be mostly a daily driver shoe. This shoe is not gonna be that great in the gym and I would suggest not using them in the gym and that's for a couple of reasons, which I'll get into, but the Cloud 5 is definitely gonna be more of like your travel and daily wear focus shoe and it's not going to be that great as serving as a daily wear shoe that can also work for working out if you want that style of shoe the cloud x3 will do a good job because it is overall pretty comfortable for daily wear but it also performs better in the gym the second major difference to note about these shoes is their upper constructions and their lacing systems so here in the cloud x3 versus the cloud 5 you have different upper constructions over here in the cloud x3 you have more reinforced layers around the toe box you also have a slightly more rigid midfoot area and that's going to help give you a little bit more security for training purposes. In the Cloud 5, you have a much more lightweight and breathable mesh through the forefoot into the midfoot, and you also have the speed lacing system, whereas in the Cloud X3, you have a traditional lacing system. Now, the shoe does come with another pair of laces, so you can use a traditional lacing system, but out of the box, the Cloud 5 comes with a speed lacing system. The third major difference to note about these shoes is their Cloud Tech midsoles and the densities of those midsoles. So, upon first glance, these shoes look like they have similar midsole constructions. However, the density varies a little bit. So, over here in the Cloud 5, this is much more cush with its overall responsiveness and its overall comfort. So, the Cloud 5, this is why I also think it's a more cush daily wear shoe. So, if you do one thing that's a little bit softer on the feet all day, this is gonna be your go-to. Whereas in the Cloud X3, the Cloud Tech midsole is a little denser. This is to give you a bit more stability in the gym and to help you stay a little bit more grounded and stable when doing like multi-directional work. So when it comes to the midsole densities, the Cloud X3 is gonna give you a slightly more stable ride and a slightly firmer cushioning. And the fourth subtle difference is their heel to toe drop. So in the Cloud X3, you have an eight millimeter heel toe drop and in the Cloud 5, you have a seven millimeter drop. So not the biggest difference, but it is a tiny difference at that but overall those are the biggest differences I think that are worth noting for the Cloud X3 and the Cloud 5 but now let's talk about how these shoes compare regarding their performance for both working out and daily wear. So to break down the performances of the Cloud X3 and the Cloud 5, I'll talk about how they perform for working out in more cross-training context and for daily wear. And yes, I have used the Cloud 5 for working out, would not recommend it, and I'll expand on that. And I have used the Cloud X3 for daily wear, so I'll expand there as well. So when it comes to cross-training and working out, the Cloud X3 is going to be your go-to shoe. This model is designed for that context, and why the shoe is gonna perform better than the Cloud 5 is for three key reasons. Number one, you're gonna have better midfoot security and upper security in this shoe. This shoe is going to lock you down a lot more in the gym and it's pretty lightweight and still breathable, which I personally like. Number two, with that firmer midsole, you're going to have a bit more stability for training context. Now, the Cloud X3 is never going to be a shoe that you want to train super heavy in with your barbell work or heavier lifts or heavier machine work because you don't have a full rubber outsole and you don't have the most stability, but it's going to be stabler than the On Cloud 5 and it will work for lighter training context where you're not pushing your weight incredibly high. The third reason why I like this shoe for working out is is the outsole is a little bit flared out. So the CloudTech midsole in this model comes out a little bit more. So for multi-directional work, the Cloud X3 does a little bit better of a job because the midsole doesn't compress nearly as easy. And since it has a wider base, you can feel a little bit more locked down in this shoe. Now, similar to training super heavy, the Cloud X3 is not necessarily my favorite shoe for multi-directional work, but I think for more casual cross-training hit and class style workouts, the Cloud X3 will do a good job. And with the Cloud 5, I would suggest not using this shoe in the gym just because number one, it runs wicked narrow. And number two, this Cloud Tech midsole compresses a ton. So let's say you're doing lateral movements. This is gonna compress a ton and you're gonna lose out on stability and just really ground in the foot. So the Cloud 5, I would suggest passing on any form of training. If you're thinking about getting this model and you wanna use it for working out, I would say think twice. When it comes to daily wear, which shoe is better? So 
Truthfully, I feel like both shoes can perform really well, and that's why I think if you want a shoe primarily for working out and then some day-to-day -day use, go with the Cloud X3. Don't even bother investing in the Cloud 5, to be honest. But if you do want a shoe only for daily wear, the Cloud 5 can be a pretty good option for a couple of reasons. So number one, I like that you could slip the shoe on. It makes it very convenient. And number two, I like how lightweight and breathable it is. It's pretty cushiony, and it does feel pretty good for all-day wear contacts. Now, the Cloud 5, despite being made for daily wear, I'm actually not the most fond of regarding long-term use. I'm already having some durability issues up here on my toe box. I'm having this little layer of flip off and the toe box and upper construction in the shoe has been an issue for other folks. If you read the comments on my video review of the Cloud 5, you'll see plenty of comments talking about that. So that is something I would say be very hesitant of with the Cloud 5. Also, this shoe runs pretty dang narrow. So if you don't have a narrow or medium foot width, I find the Cloud 5 to be a little bit more limiting compared to the Cloud X3. Now the Cloud X3 will work for daily wear. I do wish it was a little bit easier to slip on at times, but it does have a slightly wider last construction and it does breathe pretty well too. So again, both shoes will work for daily wear. The Cloud 5 can work for certain foot anatomies and if you just want a shoe for day-to-day -day use, but if you want a shoe for working out too that is also pretty comfortable for daily wear, I would say go with the Cloud X3 and that is something that I wish On made a little bit more clear on their site. So when it comes to the sizing and fit of the Cloud X3 and Cloud 5, I think most folks should be safe going true to size. Now that does come with some caveats. In the Cloud 5, this shoe runs a little bit more narrow. So if you have a narrow to medium foot width, this model should fit true to size. If you are a little bit more on the medium to wider foot width, you might want to go up a half size in the Cloud 5. In the Cloud X3, it's a little bit wider and I find the upper to give you a little bit more space. So for like narrow to medium and even slightly wider feet, this model should fit true to size. Now with on models, they all run pretty dang narrow. So when I say wider, that is very relative to what I'm talking about. If you have a double E width foot or even an E width with foot, you might want to tread lightly with both of these shoes because on shoes typically feel a little bit more narrow through the midfoot and toe box. But that being said, narrow and medium width feet should be safe going true to size in both of these models. So when it comes to the price of the On Cloud 5 and the On Cloud X3, you can expect to pay $139.99 USD for the Cloud 5 and $149.99 USD for the Cloud X3. Now, if you don't have a foot anatomy that aligns with narrower shoes, and if you're not super stoked on on shoes and the Cloud Tech midsole and how they look, then I would say probably pass on both of these shoes to be quite honest. Let's call it what it is, but I think both these shoes are pretty overpriced. The Cloud 5 has long-term durability issues, plus it doesn't have a full rubber tread. So if you are using this shoe as your only daily driver shoe, you might find this shoe breaks down pretty dang quickly, especially if you're wearing it in inclement weather. With the Cloud X3, it's a pretty good like hybrid focus shoe. So I do think it has a case for that use context, but honestly, if you're somebody who's gonna be going hard with your lifting and your cross training, I think there are better models for 150 USD, but the Cloud X3, I think has a price that could be a little bit more justified for certain contexts, whereas the Cloud 5 is kind of a meh shoe at that. And honestly, I haven't been super hyped on the shoe's overall durability, especially when you consider that they cost $140 USD. All right, so now let's cover the weight, heel, toe drop, and insole in the Cloud 5 and the Cloud X3. Over here in the Cloud 5, for my size 10 model here, we have a weight of 8.5 ounces. In the Cloud X3, for my size 10 shoe, we have a weight of nine ounces. The heel to toe drop in the Cloud X3 is eight millimeters, whereas the heel to toe drop in the Cloud 5 is seven millimeters. Both of these shoes feature thin foam removal insoles. So you can take the insole out in both of these shoes and use your own insoles if you need to. You do get a little bit more upper volume in the Cloud X3 for the record. All right, so now let's cover the construction differences of the Cloud 5 and the Cloud X3. Looking at the uppers of these shoes, in the Cloud 5, you have a breathable mesh with some synthetic overlays here. The upper in this model is very lightweight, and then you also have a textile midfoot that transitions back here into the heel. You have a little bit of padding back here in the heel, so the break-in process for the Cloud 5 is typically pretty good for most folks. In the Cloud X3, you also have a mesh upper through the forefoot with some textile overlays through the midfoot into the heel, but the shoe is a little bit more rigid, so it is a little bit heavier in nature compared to the material weight compared to the Cloud 5, and that's why you do get a little bit more security in this shoe. Looking at the lacing system in the Cloud X3, you have five core eyelets that go up with a six back here for lace lock. 
This is a new feature on the Cloud X3, so this X lacing system down here. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of it, and I wish they would have left the old lacing system that they use on the Cloud X, because what ends up happening now with the Cloud X3, and I talk about this in the individual review of the shoe, is that this material actually folds over itself once you tighten the shoe a ton. So definitely keep that in mind if you do want to invest in the Cloud X3. And another thing is that this tongue has a little bit of a gusset down here, but up at the top, it's not gusseted, so it can roll in a little bit too, which is also kind of annoying because this tongue is a little bit wider. So with the Cloud X3's midfoot construction, I wish they would have kept it consistent with the Cloud X because some of these updates are kind of meh at best. And then looking at the midsole in the Cloud X3, you have the Cloud Tech midsole. You also have the Speedboard Tech in the sole of the shoe. So that's what gives it a little bit more of a stiffer ride regarding its overall flex. And then the Cloud Tech midsole itself is a little bit more dense and it flares out up here at the forefoot. So you do have a slightly wider base in the Cloud X3. Looking at the Cloud 5's midsole, you also have the Cloud Tech in this shoe, but it's a little bit softer and it gives you a little bit more of a cushioned ride. So as you can see, it compresses a little bit easier compared to the Cloud X3 and it doesn't flare out nearly as much and it has a slightly narrower build to it, which is another reason why you don't want to use the Cloud 5 for working out. Looking at the outsole constructions of these shoes, you have some rubber tread up here in the forefoot and in the heel in the Cloud 5, but you do have some exposed foam layers here, which is why I'm not the biggest fan of using this shoe for high volume daily wear in inclement weather that can break down this foam a little bit faster. In the Cloud X3, you have a similar rubber tread up here in the forefoot and the heel of this model, and you have some exposed foam here, so definitely keep that in mind as well if you do invest in the Cloud X3 for working out and for daily wear. But overall, those are the major construction features of these shoes and how they vary. Both shoes, once again, feature thin foam removable insoles, but if you have additional questions on the constructions of these shoes, drop a comment down below. All right, y'all, that breaks down my comparison of the On Cloud X3 versus the On Cloud 5. Hopefully this comparison was able to answer some of the questions that you might have had about these shoes because I have gotten so many comments about these shoes and comparing them on my videos that I figured it could be useful to build out this comparison. But if you have additional questions, drop some comments down below. Let me know whatever you have. I'll try to answer what you got. And also, if you feel like reaching out to me personally, hit me up on Instagram. That's also linked down below. But as always, drop a like on the video, drop to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.